Welcome to King Roy. Today's video will be going over snipers, teaching you which one's the best one for which type of thing. Maybe you're a beginner in the game, trying to figure out which sniper is best for you. Or maybe you're tired of your older brother beating you in a 1v1 snipers only all the time. Either way, this video is for you. Let's go ahead and get into the snipers. So there are so far nine snipers at the time of recording this video here they all are and they each have their classification their special attributes and stuff and uh yeah let's start from the weakest to the strongest with that being said we're gonna go with the two tap guns we've got the xpr the m21 and the svd now for the xpr the XPR is just a gun, you see its damage is like 55, so it's a 2 tap every time unless you can hit the head. So this is your fast fire rate that's going to go pow pow, so yeah, if you feel you can hit a second shot after hitting one, then go ahead and use this, but I mean, yeah, it's just a quick firing sniper with low damage. Good ADS time, good movement speed, but terrible damage. The M21 has stepped up on that damage, has lost a little bit of the ADS time, not too much, and has also lost a little bit of the movement speed, but it still has that two tap move or that two tap potential with increased damage. Now the damage with the M21 is a little finicky, if I say so myself, like you might hit the chest once and get a kill, but then you might hit it again and not get a kill. Like, it's quite finicky, but sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, if you hit chest or above, but, uh, yeah. As long as you're aiming for chest with the M21 most of the time, you'll have enough damage to kill them. But if not, then, uh, yeah, let's keep going. And you have the SVD. Now, I know it looks like the damage dropped, but the SVD is quite crazy. If you hit the chest, nine times out of ten, it's going to kill them. Like, th th this is a very good gun for a uh, sniper only, because not only does it have a very quick fire rate, like, it's, I think it's quicker than the SKS, if you ask me, but it's, of course, slower than the M21, slower than the XBR, but even at that, it it's still got a very fast fire rate when compared to the rest of the snipers, and it has good damage as long as you hit chest or above, like I said. More than likely it's a kill. Headshots for any sniper is a kill. But uh, yeah. I would not not recommend taking this to a gunfight. If you know you can hit a second shot. Then go ahead and take it. But most of the time you won't need to. Unless you hit like the arm. The feet. Anything not uh, vital. Moving on next we have the Arctic. Oh, boy. This is a uh, terrible terrible thing. In the XPR, in the M21, and in the SVD, you can have very good ADS time and still pack a punch with decent damage 2 to 1 shot. The Arctic, on the other hand, very solid sniper, like lower down you can get a kill with, like closer to the stomach area you can get a kill now. But the ADS time is terrible. Like, it's not terrible, but you take this to a gunfight. You're getting wrecked if they have like a sniper with decent attachment. Which, if you go and you try to build something for ADS time, then the vertical recoil is terrible, and that kind of takes away from what the Arctic is meant to be. Like, most people sleep on the Arctic, and they think it's like just a sniper, a one-tap sniper. It's not classified like that. It's more of still in the two tap, but like the damage is quite crazy. So if you use the Arctic, I would pray for you. I would never recommend taking this to a sniper only unless you're like a camper. And I don't recommend that either. But I mean, you got to do what you got to do. If you're a hard scope camper, then this is the gun for you because you miss a shot. Less than a half a millisecond later, you're going to be able to shoot again. So. Yeah, definitely take this if you're that type of player. But if you're a competitive guy who wants to quick co quick scope and stuff, this is not for you. Because if you miss the first shot, like I said, it completely takes away from the Arctic. 
that second shot is going to be aimed in the air and you're going to have to wait for it to come back down. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be dead by then. So enough about the Arctic. Moving on, we have the Outlaw. Now, the Outlaw is a very solid sniper. I will put this dead center where it comes to two tap and one tap, even though this is a one tap. Chest or above, definitely getting a kill. And the fire rate is low. Like, this is like a, um, like, like I said, a solid sniper. This, this is what you call a sniper sniper. Would I take this to a gunfight? Yes and no. The ADS time is good on its stock, but I don't think it has too many attachments you can go for that will give you good ADS time without it ending up like the Arctic, which means it'll just uh have that one bullet and then the gun will be in the air. The thing is with the Arctic, though, it has like that semi-automatic fire. So you're going to need it not to have a lot of vertical. This, the vertical is not too bad on it. So you don't have to worry about that. So would I take this to a gunfight? Yeah. Yeah, it's a solid sniper. But we have a few more that we're going to come up on that would definitely take the place of this. So, I mean, if you like the Arctic, it's a very solid gun, like I said. But there's better snipers out there if you're a quick scoper. Moving on, we have the Rytec and the NA-45. These are just spammer snipers. Don't use them, please. Please don't use them. The Rytec is... The Rytec is probably one of the most highly versatile guns when it comes to sniper. You can make this thing a hard scoping sniper that will be a one-tap. And, like, let me just go ahead and show you. First of all, it has a thermite magazine, so you shoot a literal thermite out of your magazine. And then the other one is an explosive magazine, so kind of like shooting a sticky grenade with not as much power. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're hard scoping, you see it takes away a lot of the fire time or the fire rate and ADS time. I mean, yeah, you see it slows down the gun. But if you don't put that on, you can go for straight ADS time attachments and... Uh, It'll have crazy vertical. This might be worse than the Arctic on the vertical. So, uh, take it or leave it. I would, I, I wouldn't use the right tech. I know some people do, but you have to hit your shot. If it, it's like a tank stopper, bro. Like the the right tech AMR, it, 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 it it's a tank stopper, bro. In BR, it's very good, but like in this multiplayer, I I don't I don't see this doing too well. Unless, of course, you hit your shots, but that's the same for every single sniper. But um, enough about this. This is just, yeah. Now we have to talk about this gun, which is, I mean, okay. For those of y'all who are looking for a sniper, you're probably not going to look at this. But the, for those of y'all who are new to the game, bro, a lot of y'all are probably just coming off of Fortnite or something and saying, let me just try Call of Duty Mobile out. Bro, forget the NA-45, please, for our sake. Bro, this thing is literally a spam. A, a spammer gun, bro. I have high explosive ammo, electromagnetic ammo, and fragment ammo. All of these have their different things. I'm pretty sure the electromagnetic, yeah. You shoot one bullet. It, it, has, it has a two magazine clip, though. You shoot one bullet, and it'll have, like, this electromagnetic field that comes out. And if you shoot even close to that field... It doesn't even have to be dead center. It will ignite a bomb. That, that, that's just how the, the gun works. Without any magazine on it. Let me take this off. It's just a bomb shooter. So it's a two tap. But like you, you can wipe a whole team with this. I could imagine a hacker. Like starting the game in the sky. And then like just pulling the trigger twice. As soon as the game starts bro. The team's getting wiped with this. This is like a. It's like a boom bow on a sniper. That's like very terrible. I, I don't know how to explain it, bro. It, it's terrible. But I mean, it has its perks. You can, like I said, you can wipe a whole team with it. So it has its perks. But I mean, it's fun to use. It's not fun to be used on with. But I mean, if you're going to a sniper fight, th this isn't going to work out for you. You might get a few kills with it. But when we get to these last two guns, bro, you're getting destroyed. And with that being said, 
the final two guns, the metas in the game, the locust and the DLQ. Um, I don't really know which one to put ahead. I don't, the locust or the DLQ. The DLQ says it has more damage than the locust, but wait, I must have, I think I have stopping power. Oh, I don't. Never mind. But anyway, the, the, the locust, it, it, just trust me, the DLQ has more damage. Like, it, it says it doesn't, it probably doesn't, but the DLQ is more likely to get a one-tap kill off of a glitch than the locust. Like, it, 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 if there's a tiny little bit of lag and you hit a little bit too low than where you were supposed to, the DLQ can compensate most of the time. The Locust, on the other hand, probably not. I mean, these are very good uh, guns. The fire rate is 28 on the Locust and 28 on the DLQ. They fire at the exact same time. But another big hitter, which is why the damage, I would say, is better on the DLQ. If you look at the range, the range is 99. If you look at the Locust, the range is 95. So, uh, yeah, if you start to get into, like, 20-plus meter distance, which is normally where you're going to be sniping, if not, then good luck in not quickscoping that. So, uh, yeah, dude, the DLQ packs a punch. The Locust does, too, but the DLQ, I gotta give the edge a little bit more. And then the controllability, I mean, the Locust has a lot more control. Which means, like, if I shoot one bullet, will the gun fly up in the air and come back down? The Locust has a less likely chance to do that. And by likely, I mean it's going to have, like, less of a bounce. But, I mean, they both have bounce. They can both be customized for very good ADS time and very low recoil. But, I mean, they do have recoil. I mean, how do I explain it? You see the fire rate is 28. Compared to all the other snipers, this fire rate is slow. So by the time you're even able to shoot another bullet, the gun would have been back down to where it needs to be. So you really don't have to worry about uh, vertical unless you have like plus 30% or more. But uh, yeah, nobody really can give the edge between the Locust and the DOQ. Some people vote for the DOQ, some for the Locust, um, me. Personally, I used to be a Locust fan, but I then found out the DLQ because I had no choice but to start quickscoping to get into some com competitive gameplay. And like I said, that DLQ has a little bit more damage, so rather than the crazy hit markers you begin with the Locust, don't get me wrong, it comes with the DLQ too. But you have a better chance with the DLQ of getting that kill. So uh, yeah, so think of these guys as brothers. Like, one is going to pack a punch, the other one's going to pack a punch, but, like, just a little bit weaker. One is going to have better control over it. It's a well-rounded thing. Let me check the accuracy. Yeah, the accuracy, 55. Yeah, every other attribute other than damage and range, which it still beats it in damage, but other than range, goes to the locust. But, like, the, the DLQ for damage, he's the damage hitter. The Locust is kind of the weaker guy that's more well-rounded. And, yeah, what would I take to a gunfight? It would have to be... I can't give an edge. The DOQ is better for beginners, I'd say. Like, to start getting down the quick scoping mechanism. But then the Locust is a little bit different and has a more deceptive i should say scope in the, the way it scopes in is more deceptive and you have to like play for the locus in order to get used to it whereas the doq the same way you practice for doq is the same you could for m21 or any other sniper except for the svd the svd is weird too so is the right tech and the na45 but the rest uh, i should say is fine but uh yeah this video is getting long. I'm going to try to end it before 16 minutes. And here's my final words. Arctic, do not take to a sniper 1v1 fight. NA45, use it to troll your little brother or your friends.
But um, other than that, please don't use it. Rytec, you gotta get used to it. SVD, very solid gun. Um, M21, decent, decent gun. XPR, I would use the M21 over the, over the XPR. Just forget about the XPR. DOQ and Locust, they're at the top of the game. Top of the game, bro. You gotta use one of them if you're going in a sniper 1v1. Cause of, just because of the ADS time. and the, the, It's just the way it works. Outlaw is your crazy cousin that nobody likes. But some people do. He's pretty cool. He, he's just been never given a chance. And uh, yeah. I mean, th th that's what I got. So take the Locust, take the DLQ. If you want builds, let me know. And for the rest of them, pretty much forget them. But don't forget them. The SVD is nice. Outlaw is nice. Yeah.